Hello students, welcome back to 60 out of 60 in Kset Chemistry 2025 series in just 200 days. So today we are going to discuss about alkenes and especially we will be talking about the nomenclature, isomerism and the preparation of alkenes. Okay? So now you can join our WhatsApp channel, link will be there in the description section and you can get access to all our PDF notes and everything. Okay? So now let's get started with the first thing. So today we are in which part students? Today we are in part 5. Yeah, today we are in part 5 where we will be talking about the structure, nomenclature, isomerism and the preparation of alkenes. Okay. So I won't be discussing these things because this are we will be coming in the next classes. Okay. So before that students, here is a small announcement. So as you all know, the PU board examinations are very near and we need to like boost our preparation. So to help you with this, we have come up with the PU2 success blueprint test series, which includes 12 mock tests that uh, that will be like four part tests and eight full length papers. There will be from the subject physics, chemistry, maths, bio or CS. There will be like doubt clarification classes, one short revision videos and very, very important video solutions with detailed explanation. Okay. Now all these were available at rupees 5 all these were available at rupees 599 but now you can avail this at just rupees 499 by using our coupon code that is ny2025 okay so students do not miss this opportunity as this offer is valid only till jan 10th Okay. After that, again, the prices will go high. So, make sure that you purchase this before Jan 10 and to do that, you can go to the description section. Link is there. Click on the link and then buy the test series. Okay. Fine. Next, coming to today's class, these are the highlights of today's class that we are going to talk about. So, before that, just have a small introduction. So, alkenes general formula is CnH2n. Like for example, if I have a 2 carbon alkene, then how many H will be there? 2 times of 2, right? So, that is C2 H4. So, if, if I see 3 H6, C4 H8, okay? Next, alkenes are also called as olefins, okay? Now, why are they called as olefins? So, the first member of, it, uh, the first member that is your ethene means, so for alkenes, we need minimum 2 carbons, right? So, the first member that is C2 H4, okay? It has some one oily uh, type of texture or it is a uh, means what I can say is it forms an oily liquid okay when reacted with chlorine. So from that the name has come that these are called as olefins like like oil okay. Next coming to the structure of alkenes. So we have a double bond all of you know that suppose for C2H4 if I draw okay. Now you can see this carbon has three sigma bonds, right? So if three sigma bonds are there, then the hybridization is sp2, okay? So in sp2, there will be three hybrid orbitals. Each hybridized orbital is sp2 hybrid, right? So you can see, suppose, mm, yeah, suppose this is the first carbon. It has three sp2 hybrid orbital. This is one hybrid orbital. This is another and this is another, right? So now these three hybrid orbital will form three sigma bonds. One sigma bond is formed with the another carbon, another sigma bond is formed with another hydrogen, another sigma bond is formed with another hydrogen. Now apart from this, the there is one p orbital unhybridized. Okay. So this is what? Unhybridized p orbital. Unhybridized p orbital. Now these two unhybridized p orbital undergo overlapping okay to form pi bonds okay fine next uh, now what happens due to this loose pi bonds are loosely bound electrons okay so that is why we can say that these alkenes are rich in electrons okay because these electrons are available so that is why they are nucleophilic in nature okay and they are also unstable so due to this unstability what happens immediately these alkenes can react with hydrogen or anything to get converted to alkanes okay fine next coming to nomenclature so the nomenclature ends with the word e n e Okay. So, for example, if you have only one double bond, it is propene, here one double bond butene, 
here you can see the double bond is in the second carbon so you have to mention the position but 2 ea next if you have two double bonds 1 2 3 so 1 and 3 position so buta 1 comma 3 di okay so that is how nomenclature is done we will do some practice questions here so these questions i have picked up from your ncrt only so now if you see that this structure okay so here there is a double bond and here there is a double bond so if i number it this has two ch3 group so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 okay so at third and sixth carbon i have double bond right so i can write it like this so if i just let me expand the structure first 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 and here i have one second okay so these two ch3 groups are there on the second carbon right so you can see two ch3 groups are there then on the third carbon we have a double bond okay next fourth fifth sixth third fourth fifth sixth here a double bond okay next seventh eighth on the eighth carbon you have one more methyl group right yes so now what i can name just let me yes so i can write it like 2 8 dimethyl okay dec deca at what positions we have double bond 3 and 6 so 3 comma 6 diene okay now here second one very simple you can see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 so 1 3 5 and 7 4 double bonds are there so you can write octa okay 1 3 5 and 7 tetra in okay tetra stands for four double bond next if i see this particular structure uh, one second this particular structure if i have ch2 okay double bond c then propyl group is attached so i can write one propyl group like this okay and another propyl group like this okay so now if i just number i will be aside you can see okay this will be the structure right so on the second carbon i have propyl group and on the first carbon i have the double bond right so i can write this third one like this mm. third one is two propyl okay pent one en then now let us see the next question the fourth one uh, this structure looks little complicated let us see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 okay so i can number it in this way 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 or you can go that side also that is fine so now what will be the name of this compound you can see that uh, on fifth carbon we have methyl group sixth seventh carbon i have ethyl group ninth carbon again i have methyl group right so alphabetical order we should go so seven ethyl okay then after that five and nine five comma nine dimethyl okay deck okay uh, at which position six e n e okay then fine now let us move towards the structure of isomers okay so structure sorry isomers of alkenes so there is two type of isomerism one is structural isomerism and another one is geometrical isomerism now structural isomerism means what where the i told you structural isomers is where the nomenclature will be different of different different compounds okay so for example if i have but uh, this is the structure C4H8. Okay, what what can uh, structures can be drawn for here? Now you see, I can draw like this. This is one structure I can do. This one I can do another structure. Okay, so let me just write down the H. So I'm just writing like this. Okay, so three plus three six. 
uh, oh, one second. Here it will be two. Okay, so three, two, five plus one, six, seven, eight. Okay, and here also the structure can be like this. Okay, next one more structure I can draw is. Okay, so now you see here the name is what but one e n e. Here the name is but two e n e. Okay, and here it is two methyl propene. Right now, if you see, this is structure number one, structure number two, and structure number three. Now see, one and two. What is what type of isomers are they? The position of the double bond is different, right? So one and two will be positional isomers. Now, if you compare one and three, now you see here the carbon, the chain is of four carbons, and here the chain is of three carbons, right? So if the the number of carbons, the chain is different, then one and three are what? Chain isomers. Okay, so these are the structural isomers of alkenes. Okay. Next, coming to geometrical isomerism. Geometrical isomerism. There is something called as cis and trans. Okay. So now let me explain you the structure of but two e n e. Okay. So if I just draw but two e n e, can I write like this? Okay. This is the structure of but two e n e. I can also write it in this way. right now this group where this type of isomer where the two groups are on the same side the same groups are on the same side this is called as cis isomer okay and this group where the same groups are on the opposite side okay this is called as trans isomer okay cis isomer and trans isomer so there is one condition to find geometrical isomerism so what is that condition see suppose we have this one X and Y, right? Here also I am suppose writing X and Y. The condition is that the X should not be equal to Y. If these two groups attached to the carbon are same, then there won't be any geometrical isomerism. Like for example, if I give you one structure like uh, like this, okay. This structure cannot have geometrical isomerism. The reason being that two groups attached to the same carbon are same. Okay, the two groups attached to the carbon should always be different to find geometrical isomerism. Clear? So I'll erase this one. Now there are some properties of trans isomers that you should be knowing. That see in trans isomer, if you see the dipole moment, okay, the net dipole moment get cancelled out. But in cis isomer that net dipole moment will not get cancelled. So what we can say that cis isomers are polar, trans isomers are non-polar. Okay, so that is the first thing, and the next thing is trans is always having more boiling point than cis. Now the reason for this is this is having a specific geometry. Okay, so it can fix in the lattice properly. So that is why the boiling point of trans geometry is more. Okay. Next, coming to preparation. So we have four methods of preparation. The first one is from alkynes, then from alkyl halides, vicinal dihalides, and alcohols. Now, if you know what is vicinal dihalides, so if we have two adjacent carbons are having some halogen group attached to them, okay? Adjacent carbons are having halogen atoms, then we call it vicinal dihalides, okay? So first is from alkynes. Important point. So alkynes on partial reduction with Calculated amount of dihydrogen. Why calculated amount of dihydrogen? Because if you give more amount of hydrogen, then the alkynes will get converted to alkenes. So you need to give limited amount of hydrogen in presence of catalysts such as palladized, uh, palladized charcoal partially deactivated with poisons like sulfur. Okay. Sulfur compounds or quinolines give you alkenes. Now, partially deactivated palladized charcoal is known as Lindler catalyst. This is very important. Next, alkenes thus obtained are having cis geometry. Now, alkenes on alkynes on reduction with sodium in liquid ammonia form trans alkenes. Okay. So, just now we discussed what is a cis alkene and what is a trans alkene. So, now to an alkyne, if you just uh, uh, give Lindler catalyst, then we will get cis alkene. But to the same alkyne, if you give sodium and liquid ammonia, 
that will give you a trans alkene okay so you can see the same reagent uh, reactant is there but by changing the reagents we can get different products okay so that is here you can see here the alkyne group is present if you use hydrogen with palladium and carbon you will get cis alkene but if you use hydrogen with sodium and liquid ammonia you will get trans alkene okay that is the difference fine next is from alkyl halides alkyl halides means your alkyl group containing halogens so alkyl halides on heating with alcoholic potass okay so that is your very very important reagent one molecule of halogen acid halogen acid means hx okay is removed to form alkenes this reaction is known as dehydrohalogenation okay because you are removing one hydrogen and one halogen this is an example of beta elimination because since the halogen sorry the hydrogen atom is eliminated from the beta carbon atom i'll be showing you the example now what is the rate here iodine bromine chlorine and for alkyl group tertiary secondary and primary okay so you can see here example this is the x group and this is the hydrogen is attached to the beta carbon okay so in presence of alcoholic koh one hydrogen and one halogen is removed and we get a double bond here okay so this mechan this process is called as dehydrohalogenation reaction now if x is i the reaction will be faster than bromine and then chlorine okay next we have from vicinal dihalides i already explained what is vicinal dihalides you should have same uh, halogen you should have halogens on the adjacent carbon okay so vicinal halides on treatment with zinc metal loses a molecule of znx2 to form an alkene this is known as dehalogenation okay example you can see suppose here two the structure is like this here ch2 okay this is present if you treat it with zinc then what will happen zn br2 will be removed and we will get a double bond here okay next similarly if we have uh, ch3 ch br ch2 br zn the two br will be removed and you will get a double bond here okay last mechanism is from alcohols okay so alcohols on heating with concentrated sulfuric acid form alkenes with the elimination of one water molecule since a water molecule is eliminated from the alcohol molecule in the presence of an acid the reaction is known as acid dehydration of alcohols okay dehydration means removal of water because it is taking in the presence of what uh, acid so acidic dehydration of alcohols now the reaction is also an example of beta elimination reaction since the oh group takes out one hydrogen atom attached to the beta carbon atom so we will see the example here so you can see this is suppose ethanol okay so this carbon is alpha which contains the functional group the carbon next to is called as beta and this is beta hydrogen if you use concentrated sulfuric acid and heat h and oh will be removed and we will get a double bond here okay so that is the ethene formation clear okay so that's all students in this class and once again i want to remind you about the pu2 success blueprint test series the cost of this test series is around 599 rupees but yes now we are having a discount offer of ny2025 and if you use this coupon code this you can access at just rupees 499 rupees and this coupon is valid till jan 10 okay so make sure that you do not miss this opportunity and i have already told you what all benefits you will be getting this will help you definitely to score 95 percent and above in your board examinations okay so that's all students see you soon in the next class and do not forget to subscribe the channel if you like these classes